Hey, what's up, y'all? CP from Blue Eclipse Productions, and in today's video, I'm gonna be covering uh, really quick about um, ADCs and DACs, um, as well as their importance and how it can help you when choosing to purchase a sound card or understanding what sound card you may currently be using um, when you're doing your mixes. Um, real quick, let me draw. Uh, let's see here. You know, your typical sound card is probably in gray. You know, it looks a little something like a box or whatever. Um, all sound cards have two main components. I'm going to draw them in different colors with different sizes. Um, the two components are is that every sound card has a DAC. Oh, that's, that's a little small. Let me do it a little bigger actually much bigger every sound card has a DAC and it has an ADC excuse me ADC now what an ADC is is an analog to digital converter when you listen to sound in real life that sound is an analog signal it's a natural signal it's a real life signal and sound you know when sound enters your computer it has to be converted into digital data so this is the reason why you have an ADC because it has to take the analog sound convert it into digital so that way the computer can manipulate the data and allow you to mix and do what you gotta do in the first place as far as a digital audio workstation or saving recorded data on the flip side there's also the DAC which is called the digital to analog converter now this works in a similar fashion to an ADC except it's the opposite it converts the digital signal back to an analog signal and then that analog signal can be played back through a hi-fi or through a monitor so when you plug up your monitors to your sound card or your desktop speakers a DAC is converting that digital signal to an analog signal so those speakers can react and push the sound out let you hear the sound back um, but although all sound cards have these two main components they're all not created equal and the reason why is because a typical measure that will help you know whether a sound card has a good playback or a good recording quality is by its dynamic range and let me write this out real quick and a little bit of a smaller size see here dynamic range I don't know if that's too small for you to see but yeah the dynamic range is the way that you can measure or at least for you to get an idea of if you know the DAC or the ADC is good enough for what you're trying to do for instance your typical sound card like let's just say you're going to buy a sound card right you don't have a sound card now you're looking to spend a little bit of money and um, one sound card, you know, say it costs about uh, 200 bucks. So you got sound card A over here, and it costs about 200 bucks. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, not 220, 200, excuse me. So it costs about 200 bucks. And then over here, sound card B costs about. Four hundred dollars, U.S. dollars. Four hundred bucks. Okay. Now remember, the importance of the sound card is how well it can handle its DAC and ADC dynamic range. Now, sound card A has a sound card, or I'm sorry, has a dynamic range of about, let's just say, a hundred and eighteen. Okay. Meanwhile, sound card B for four hundred dollars has a dynamic range of a hundred and eight now when it comes to dynamic range the higher the number the better the quality of the sound whether you're recording or playing it back the lower the dynamic range the more artifacts and impurities can be added to the sound simply because of the quality of the converter so getting back to this example we want to get a sound card that has a really good output okay 
Sound card A costs two hundred dollars. Sound card B costs four hundred dollars. When you check the spec sheet, the spec sheet is saying that this sound card's DAC has a dynamic range of one hundred and eight. Meanwhile, on sound card A, its dynamic range is one hundred and eighteen for two hundred dollars. Now, if we're trying to get one that has a really good DAC, which will help with the audio playback through the monitors, which do you think would be the better purchase? The $400 one with 108 dynamic range or the $200 one with 118 dynamic range? Well, you probably have better chances by purchasing the cheaper $200 one that has 118 dynamic range because this is one of the key factors that helps in determining whether your ADC or your DAC is worth buying in the first place. Um, let me give you another example just to explain it on the ADC side. Alright, same scenario. Sound card B their ADC, we're talking about input now, their ADC has an input of 109 dynamic range and in sound card A it has a dynamic range for its ADC of 96. So in this case if we're trying to get better input if sound card B's ADC has a dynamic range of 109 and sound card A has a dynamic range of 96 which would be the better buy in this scenario we would have to go with B we'd have to eat that $400 charge or the $200 difference because that little bit of dynamic range improvement will help when you're recording your vocals your bass guitar your microphone your keyboard etc so it, it's important. There's other factors that's also important, including the quality of the parts in the sound card and what type of chipset it uses and whatnot. But as far as a basic understanding, what you're trying to do when you're, when you're purchasing your sound card or using your sound card, when you're recording vocals, you want to know the quality of the DAC, the quality of the ADC, and understand that if you have a sound card with a lower dynamic range in either or both its ADC and DAC, then you're going to have a poor quality of audio playback and you're going to have a poor quality of recording no matter how well you position a microphone you're in a booth you got everything isolated it's all set up and ready to go you'll get a much better recording if you have a much better sound card and in some cases what professional studios will do is they'll actually spend money on a dedicated ADC or a dedicated DAC or a dedicated combination of the two ADC DAC and this stuff can run you up to two three four five thousand dollars you know so you get what you pay for but as far as the home recording front this is very important for you to pay attention to and to understand so that way you can get the most money out of the sound card that you're buying because a lot of these manufacturers are selling sound cards that have really low you know ADC DACs and they're charging you five six seven hundred dollars just because they got you know 20 inputs or extra jitter control and just a bunch of nonsense that might not necessarily correlate to what you're trying to do so if you're mixing you want to make sure that you get a really good DAC whether it be standalone or you find a sound card that has a good dynamic range and a you know low signal to noise ratio and whatnot and if you're equally recording um, vocals you know uh, keyboard bass guitar you want to have a really good ADC so that way you get the best quality from the microphone as it's coming in and again that also is with the understanding that you know you're doing it the best recording you can as far as you're in a booth or you have a nice setup where there's not a lot of flutter echo room artifacts and whatnot but um sorry for going kind of fast I'm on short time but again you got any questions hit me up cp at blueeclipsepro.com and I will try to shoot another video on this mixing 101 appreciate y'all for watching this appreciate those that have subscribed and I definitely appreciate those that have commented peace and happy mixing